the best of the week on Relevant Radio. Let's go to John in New Jersey. Patrick, I was watching an old program of Tim Staples was on, mm-hmm. and he said that uh, the only place where faith alone appears in the New Testament, it's preceded by not by, and I think that's in James. Right. I just wasn't sure of chapter and verse. The second question is, then if that's the only time, then where does that Christian teaching, faith alone, that the Protestants profess come from? Right. So um, it appears in James chapter 2, verse 24, and that is true. The only place in Scripture where the phrase justified and the words by faith alone appear together in a verse is in James 2, 24, where it says, you see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. So to back up, let's uh, begin by saying in verse 14, What does it profit, my brethren, if a man says he has faith but has not works? Can his faith save him? And it's a rhetorical question. The answer is clearly no. If a brother or sister is ill-clad and in lack of daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what does that profit? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I, by my works, will show you my faith. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown? <laughs> now, now, this translation is the Revised Standard Version. In the New American Bible and others, the word ignoramus is used. So here it says, Do you want to be shown, you shallow man, that faith apart from works is barren? Was not Abraham our father? Now, pay close attention to what he's saying here. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered his son Isaac upon the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by works, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed in God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Then comes verse 24, you see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way was not also Rahab the harlot justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. That's referring to the story of Jericho in the book of Joshua. And also the last verse says, for the body apart from the spirit is dead. And as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so faith apart from works is dead. So it's really, really clear that you're not saved by faith alone and you're not justified by faith alone. And yet there are people who claim that you are. How do we respond to that? Well, the first thing to point out is that we are saved not by our faith. We are saved by God's grace. And it says so in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast. And then it goes on to say, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So this formula, this is the the linchpin of Catholic teaching, and that is it's all God's grace from beginning to end. We can't boast about it. And even the faith that we have that he gives us, as it says, it's a gift. Even this faith that we can apprehend God's grace by, even that is a gift. So we can't ultimately even take credit or boast of our own faith. Without God's grace, we couldn't even have saving faith. So it's God's grace that saves us. We appropriate that grace through faith, and then we cooperate with that grace through works, as St. James says. Now let me offer you one other thing, because this is important that you know how to respond. Going back to James chapter 2, some people, they try to evade the plain meaning of Scripture here, and they say, well— He wasn't talking about being justified in God's eyes. He's talking about being justified in the eyes of men, which is why he says in verse 18, but some will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me, a man, your faith apart from your works, and I will show you by my works my faith. So this is a misreading of the text or a misunderstanding of it because it suggests that he's talking about some other kind of justification, which really... Who cares? It doesn't matter what other people think. It only really matters what God thinks and what God knows about you. So 
the way to demonstrate this is go down to verse 21, where it points out, where he invokes Abraham. He says, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered his son Isaac upon the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and his faith was complete by his works. This is how you can disprove this notion that it's he's talking about some other kind of justification, not the justification with God, but in the eyes of men, because there was no audience there when Abraham did this. You go back to Genesis and you read the story of how when Abraham took Isaac to Mount Moriah and he was going to take him up, and Isaac, who is a prefigurement in this case of Jesus, because he was carrying the wood upon which he would be sacrificed on his shoulders. He was carrying the wood the way Jesus carried the cross up Mount Golgotha. And so at the base of this large hill, nigh unto being a mountain, Abraham tells all the retinue, of followers and attendants who were with them, stay here. He did not allow anyone to come up into or up onto the summit where he was going to sacrifice Isaac. So there was no human audience. So it's clear from the context that he's not referring to being justified in the eyes of men. He's referring to being justified in the eyes of God. And this is why it's so important that we understand, as it says in Ephesians, in Ephesians 2, that we are we are saved by grace through faith, not by works. That's Pelagianism. You can't earn your salvation. And this is all a gift of God. But the works that we are created to do, they complete our faith. They, they demonstrate our faith, as St. James says in James chapter 2. And if you had works and no faith, that won't work. That won't save you. If you have faith and no works, that won't work. That won't save you. But if you have God's grace that you've appropriated through your faith, which is a gift of God, and you're cooperating with that faith and that grace through good works, that's the combination for salvation. That's awesome. God bless you. Thank you. And uh, also, if you want a parting gift, I would recommend a book by Steve Wood on grace and justification for Protestants. And he himself used to be a member of Calvary Chapel long ago. And he wrote this book as a way, not only for Protestants to understand the true biblical teaching on grace and justification, but also for Catholics who may be even less familiar with it. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. 